And here is the Writer's Almanac for Tuesday, the 7th of July, 2020. It was on this date in 1865, Mary Surratt was hanged at the gallows in Washington for having knowledge of the plot to assassinate Abraham Lincoln. She ran a boarding house in Washington, D.C. She was a Confederate sympathizer. Her son John was a co-conspirator, along with John Wilkes Booth and the others. But everyone, including the executioner, expected that President Andrew Johnson would pardon her. But he refused to. He said she kept the nest that hatched the egg. It was at her boarding house that Booth and the others had plotted the assassination. It's the birthday of the genetics pioneer Nettie Stevens, born Cavendish, Vermont, 1861. She got her Ph.D. in biology, and she studied mealworms and discovered that the male sex cells could have either an X or a Y chromosome, while the female could only carry X chromosomes. And based on this observation, she concluded that the sex of an organism was determined based on what chromosome it had inherited from its male parent. It's the birthday of the historian David McCullough, born in Pittsburgh, 1933. He went off to Yale, went to work for Sports Illustrated and then American Heritage magazine, wrote his first big biography, Truman, 1993, and then John Adams in 2001. David McCullough, who for many years worked in a small shed in the backyard of his home on Martha's Vineyard. He said nothing good was ever written in a large room. He said about writing biographies, I don't think you have to love your subject. Initially, you shouldn't, but it's like picking a roommate. After all, you're going to be with that person every day, maybe for years, and why subject yourself to someone you have no respect for or outright don't like? And for that reason, McCullough quit a project to write a biography of Pablo Picasso, simply because he said he was an awful man. And it's the birthday of Gustav Mahler, the composer, born in Bohemia, what is now the Czech Republic, in 1860. He was a conductor at the Vienna Court Opera. He was a famous conductor throughout Europe, famous for his tragic symphony in 1906, ending with three climactic hammer blows, which Mahler later believed was a premonition of the tragedies his next year. When he was fired by the opera, his three year old daughter Maria died, and he was diagnosed with a fatal heart disease. Here's a poem for today by Gerard Manley Hopkins as Kingfishers Catch Fire. I'm just going to read it for the sound, so don't think too hard about it. I'm just going to read it, and you can listen to it. As Kingfishers Catch Fire. As kingfishers catch fire, dragonflies draw flame, as tumbled over rim and roundy wells stones ring, like each tucked string tells, each hung bell's bow swung, finds tongue to fling out broad its name. Each mortal thing does one thing and the same, deals out that being indoors, each one dwells, selves, goes itself, myself, it speaks and spells, crying, what I do is me for that I came. I say more, the just man justices, keeps grace that keeps all his goings graces, acts in God's eye what in God's eye he is, Christ. For Christ plays in ten thousand places, lovely in limbs and lovely in eyes not his, to the Father through the features of men's faces." As Kingfishers Catch Fire by Gerard Manley Hopkins. That's the Writer's Almanac for Tuesday, July the 7th, funded by donations from listeners like you, now available on PRX for distribution by your local radio station. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.